Okay, I think we should start. So many of our guests and audiences have joined the call. So uh, Kanaya, Yogesh, Miteshi, Rushab, uh, you can start. Uh, Sahil, you can on your cameras. <clears throat> yeah. So I welcome you all to this webinar of Indicans and uh, good evening, first of all. So uh, I'm Tejas Antati, Marketing Manager at Indicans. And uh, this is the ninth webinar of the webinar series. Uh, we have been conducting various webinars for past eight to nine months, and we have conducted uh, various related to our use cases and ERPNX developments. So those webinars were all about the use cases, and the next uh, few developments have uh, done by the editors. But uh, while uh, this was possible, and this was possible due to our uh, team members as well as the trust shown by the our clients. Uh, while thinking about this new webinar uh, topic, we thought uh, uh, as the ERPNX is evolving so much, and uh, for the past twelve years, it twelve plus years, it has been growing uh, wide and uh, has evolved so much. So. Uh, and it has helped the customers across the globe. So why not take the customer's feedback as well as uh, take the uh, OEM on the same uh, platform as a customer plat uh, and the uh, gold partner others. So we have uh, conducted this today's webinar. And uh, to go further on this webinar, uh, we thought that uh, let me introduce you first to our moderator and the host Kanaya Kai. Uh, he is a director at Indicans and has been working with uh, on the ERPNX and has seen the ERPNX journey for last 12 plus years. And he has seen how it has grown and how it has evolved. So uh, let's start uh, this webinar. Uh, over to you, Kanaya sir. And just one thing. Uh, Everyone, uh, you can ask your questions after the webinar uh, in a Q&A session. Thank you. Over to you, Kanya, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Tejas. Uh, so yes, uh, let me uh, introduce the panel members. Uh, hi, Mitesh. Thank you for joining. So Mitesh is from Aquatech. So of course, uh, every panel member is going to give their introduction so that everyone in the webinar room can uh, will, will be well aware about uh, the panelist members. And so this, uh, so the, in this webinar, uh, we have a, a team, uh, the panelists from uh, diversified segments, uh, the customers who are using ERP next, or the, those who have gone through the cycle of implementation. So those who are getting a feel and the 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 experience of uh, those who are uh, ex uh, more experienced than us in terms of the usage of a product. So the customer side, the, the other side who has developed this product, so the OEM, the Frappe team. So I think Faraz is from the Frappe side. And uh, the partners or the service providers who are actually helping in the implementation of this product for our customers as per the client's requirement. So all types of stakeholders who are making or who are a part of this success or who are making the success stories of each implementations. So in this webinar, we are going to get into a more detailed discussion about various aspects of a product, various aspects of a implementation challenges, various aspects of the adoption of a product from the user perspective. So I'm asking uh, the panelist uh, member uh, the, from the customer side, Mr. Yogesh Kedkar to introduce uh, themselves. You're on mute, Yogesh Ji. Uh, Yogesh ji, you are on mute, I think. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, thank you. Uh, thank you, Kanaya, sir, and thank you, Tejas, for introduction and this uh, arranging this call. I am attending this call for the first time in my last two and a half years of uh, with Nanomac. My company's name is Nanomac Technologies Private Limited. And uh, myself, I am uh, handling the finance portfolio here. I am the finance head of this organization. So I have been using this ERP for last almost more than two and a half years now. So I'm very much uh, happy with uh, using the ERP, first of all. So thanks, Kanaya, sir, for this uh, great software, what we are using. So I, I won't take much time. So everybody can introduce that. Thank you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Yogesh ji. Uh, uh, Mr. Sahil, if you can help us with your introduction. Uh, 
so soil is from uh, us uh, they are into a manufacturing and they are using again using this erp next for a long time yes so uh, my name is sahil and next to me is uh, prayas we're both from uh, rushab instruments and uh, we design and manufacture medical lab equipment Great. Thanks. Thanks, Sahil. Thanks, Prayas. Thank you for joining. Uh, yeah, uh, then I'm moving to uh, the Frappe team, the OEM, who has made this wonderful product for us, for all of us. Uh, yeah, Faraz. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kale. So this is uh, Faraz. I'm Faraz Khatri. I represent uh, Frappe Technologies. I joined Frappe almost uh, five years ago, where we are on version 11 and uh, it's been a great journey so far so i'm a product expert uh kind of you know uh using yapinex as well so that you know i can recommend the right solution to partners and to our prospects and uh, right now i lead the entire revenue team the global revenue team at frappe so it's been a great journey I've been uh, wonderful working with customers and partners uh, so far thank you Great, great for us. Uh, now moving ahead, uh, Mitesh. Mitesh is one of our close friends and we work uh, together. We are into this ecosystem for a long time. We have seen the product and the overall evol uh, the evolution of a product and the market segment uh, very closely together. Uh, yes, Mitesh, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Kanaya. Very nice uh, being with you here um, and very well introduced as a good friend. I think uh, <laughs> We, we share a very good bond uh, of uh, having working together in under this particular pro product that is developed by Prepit. And uh, it's, it's like I've told earlier many times that it was love at first sight for us five years back with this product and we've never looked back and it's just giving us more amazing things every next day. And I'm sure today the audience will be able to benefit from the experiences of the existing customers and we will be able to help you understand the product better that's our objective thank you very much for hosting this kanaya and your team thank you thank you mitesh so mitesh is from tanzania he he heads aquatic uh, limited uh, he is one of our uh, the partner from the ecosystem the gold partner uh, so uh, of course the experience of a gold partner uh, uh, matters a lot uh, in terms of the product adoption and the kind of challenges they have gone through uh, while implementing it for various customers from different geographies. Uh, now moving ahead, uh, yes, uh, as we are uh, quite closely working with Frappe and ERP Next for almost a decade, more than a decade, so we have seen many ups and downs in terms of the uh, the product capabilities, even in terms of the capabilities of a a uh, partner like us, the service provider like us, who has gone through uh, various ups and downs in terms of the implementation challenges. So while dealing with the customers, of course, the customers comes with various aspects and uh, various perceptions. And uh, so first is about breaking those perceptions, then uh, putting a product, a right fit into their uh, in their shoes, and then the and the acceptance of a product, the adoption of a product. So it is a big cycle. Uh, it can't be uh, completed in a in a short span. It is a it, it is a journey. So in this journey, the customer, the OEM, and the partners works hands in hands. Then only it becomes a success. And from there, uh, we have uh, come across. Uh, uh, we have selected uh, two customers uh, for this webinar. Uh, the Nanomac Technology, who is based off of Ambernath. Uh, they are using it for two and a half years or more than that and the rushab instruments from usa and they are even uh, using it and making it more specific for their uh, for their segment for their industry segment and uh, we are closely working with them so of course we would like to understand from your perspective your thought of a uh, story behind it and how you uh, gone through this overall cycle and journey and why you prefer this so moving ahead just would like to uh, understand from uh, sahil and uh, mr Presh from you uh, so you must have seen the overall industry segment where they uh, have their own products and very traditional erp systems in a place and when we talk about the manufacturing the manufacturing industries evolved a lot uh, they have gone through a now smart uh, manufacturing so in this overall uh, evolution uh, what kind of current challenges you saw uh, in the traditional erp systems which 
forced you or enforced you to go for an open source product like ERP Next. So this is to uh, silent fresh. What do you think? What was your perspective behind this? So to start out with, uh, we evolved. We were uh, about three years back. Uh, we were looking for a better solution compared to QuickBooks and spreadsheets. And uh, we were evaluating different uh, ERP solutions. And uh, one of the things was the cost as a small business. And uh, we looked at ERP, I think it was version 12 that we started version 12 looking we were at. Looking at yeah. And uh, almost immediately we said, this is not for us, not a good solution. And we do not want to even touch it, do not want to evaluate it, nothing. And we looked at several others, and uh, we learned a few things from it, that we didn't have to have just an interface to a QuickBooks or other accounting system. An ERP system could be everything, including manufacturing, inventory control, uh, uh, planning, uh, all those things. It can be because some other providers were offering those things. And we looked at, uh, by that time, version 13 had become available. And uh, we say, it looks like that this is a place where things can improve and uh, it can go up. And then as we were talking to other suppliers for customization and the cost for that, <coughs> excuse me, what we found was uh, if we wanted everything that we wanted to have in a system that would allow us to have manufacturing interface to our own website, way that we work and how we can implement that, and also have an interface or appropriate interface to our engineering documentation and engineering process for manufacturing, as well as to the quality system, then none of the existing system, no matter how strong their claims are for all those things, would uh, suffice what we were really looking for. and. Uh, we were looking for how that can happen potentially with ERP Next, and we found that uh, the uh, what you call the environment, the community, and uh, especially the partners, uh, uh, how they can be helpful in terms of implementing some of those things. And we were very fortunate that Sahil found uh, Gupteshwar Joshi from uh, New Inductrans, and. Uh, when we say this is definitely worth trying, and we started out with a small scope, expanded it to so many things. Every time we ran into some problem with uh, features that were almost implemented right, but not quite within ERP Next, we said, let's have it customized for our usage. And uh, during the process, we started to like what was coming out so much that we have decided to distribute that product in US um, under uh, our brand name, as well as uh, we worked uh, very, very soon become the partner with Frappe so that uh, support becomes somewhat easier. Both ways that Frappe can recommend us to the customers of similar product, as well as uh, we can uh, get to Frappe. Most likely we won't, uh, even if we are partner, because we would go through uh, new inductrons anyway, because they carry a lot more weight than we will. But uh, it's one of those products that we like it so much that we decided that we would want to start selling it. And uh, support from inductrons has been phenomenal. Uh, anytime we didn't have a feature that we thought that we would want to have, uh, not only Gupteshwar, but also the support team would be with us right away rather than waiting for emails and time delays and things like those. We have found ways to just communicate with them almost instantaneously if there are any issues or the problems or if we have to develop our own uh, uh, feature, then how it can be implemented at a reasonable cost and yet fulfill our desires and uh, it is easier to integrate with existing other things uh, within ERP, uh, that that has been uh, very, very fruitful. Uh, definitely, we appreciate what we have gotten from Indic Trust as well as from Frappe, 
and uh, we're glad to be here. If anybody has any question, feel free to ask us uh, regarding those things. And Sal, do you want to add something? Yeah, and I think that one of the benefits that we see not as much in open source, but just in the open source community is an openness in communication and ability to have a closer communication with the uh, development team and also to learn more about how features are actually implemented inside of the system so that we can come up with ideas about how we would like the system to behave and operate and uh, also can have more uh, involved discussions with more technical teams to be able to make those possible. Great, great, great. Thanks, uh, Sahil and Prez. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, so when we say the implementation is a journey, so in that journey, the, the journey becomes very uh, healthy and uh, easy uh, if, uh, if we get a maturity from a customer side. And uh, frankly telling, we see you are from among the, uh, the most matured customers where they have the fair understanding about their domains, their industry segments. At the same time, they are ready to understand. They are ready to get educate themselves about the product and the techno and the technicalities of it. So yes, that uh, that is helping us to make this journey a quite easier and uh, happier. Now uh, moving uh, further, yeah, yeah. Yes. So now moving further. Uh, so from a partner point of view, uh, that because the partner plays a very crucial role in uh, in our overall ecosystem. So Mitesh, what do you see uh, whenever you try to interact with the manufacturing customers? What do you see the the primary drivers or the motivation behind their consideration of any open source ERP first, and uh, what help them to pursue these factors? influencing the the kind of demand they saw for the uh, erp next thank you uh when it comes to the customers they actually don't so much uh, focus on open source or not open source what they are focusing on is their business and the way their business situations and problems can be resolved so uh, having open source is just one hurdle gone of the licensing and just open source is not enough. What you need is an open source which is well supported, well documented, and well um, implemented. And that is why the customers do want to identify which open source is having facilities. And, and look at ERP Next, like the Frepedot School is an amazing place to get self educated. The users are able, those, because in an, any organization, turnover happens of personnel. So you would like to have the training to be done as easy as possible, training to be done as uh, uh, as quickly as possible, and nothing beats the way of getting started, the new person joining the organization to take them through the prepare school and let them go through those parts. Apart from that, having flexibility in your framework is playing the biggest role in a customer making the decision. Because once they find that the solution is capable enough to suit their specific needs, because look, no businesses are safe. They are becoming important. They are becoming um, profitable because of the products or services they are providing. And there is a specific unique way in they're providing the service and products. And that is why you need a flexible platform like Frappe Framework on top of which ERPNX is built to assist those flexibility to come into your operational system that you are using in your organization and do the profitable business that you wish to do. So I would say that um, having an open source with that open community like what was mentioned and having the flexibility plays the biggest role in a customer making that decision. And that's where customers we have seen come talk about other solutions which are having rigid workflows and there's where they can stop thinking and they cannot expand their business, which is what prep framework based ERP next lets you overcome. Right, right, right. Rightly said, uh, of course, the FRAP framework uh, comes with the flexibility of enhancing. If something is not there, we can enhance it and fulfill the needs of a customer just to ensure uh, the basic uh, business needs are getting made. But at the same time, uh, it comes with the other side of a coin uh, if we do uh, more customizations, then it becomes a too heavy, 
to manage and too heavy to uh, to ensure we are giving a good support over a period of time and uh, it uh, to maintain the integrity of a product overall so that it it can talk to each other uh, the all the respective modules of a framework so yes it has both the sides but yes definitely uh, the people uh, prefers to go with such kind of frameworks because it gives the flexibility to enhance if something is not readily available though uh, product owners has given a good amount of features which are usually required for any sme segment and mid size of organization now uh, as we jointly uh, working on various enterprise customers so we know there are few things which are coming up as a part of expectations because that is all uh, that is what readily available in other products of uh, uh, the proprietary products but eventually it is going to be a part of the product that what we see and yeah. uh, i think that's why uh, the nanomac technologies and rushab instruments has preferred to go with the framework because this they saw the flexibility of uh, something which is not there can be enhanced as per the the business uh, which can fulfill the business requirements hmm. Hmm. Yeah. and 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 uh, i think the point you mentioned about if other products have those features there are some pro features that other products do not have but the business wants and there's where they get stuck in because they cannot have their business expand in a direction which they want to just because the product is restricting them correct correct exactly exactly that is how that is how even i, I am saying uh, the nanomac technologies when they started uh, exploring the options they came across odoo they came across erp next they were working on excel sheets and uh, zoho based solutions i think 3 3 and a half years back and uh, when they compared all these product and then they shortlisted erp next and then they shortlisted a partner with whom they would they would like to go ahead while doing so they were of a limited size but their plans were quite clear to go for uh, some kind of automation solutions which can automate their business processes and only erps something like erp next can only help them to scale up and now the the kind of they have grown uh, grown in last 3 years is a really a tremendous growth they have seen and uh, of course the erp next plays a one of uh, one of the factor in their growth because it is helping them to automate the uh, the various parts so yogesh ji i would like to uh, we would like to rather understand your experience why you prefer to go with erp next and what is your thought uh, behind uh, selecting any open source solution which were not uh, backed by many big proprietary companies and which was not uh, even implemented by big proprietary uh, the the customers even though you have gone for a year next what was your uh, side of a uh, thought behind it uh, yogesh ji you are on mute Uh, thanks for uh, sharing your experiences, all the partners and Kanaya sir. So my experience with uh, ERP initially, we as uh, Kanaya sir rightly said, we were on trying on Zoho or Tally even. But that time we were struggling with the project management, especially because we have our product is as such it takes uh, around six to eight months to complete a project. So project management was a key for our requirement. which we were not definitely uh, getting experience or through the other softwares what we tried for uh, finally uh, through sources we tried erp next and we were really happy and it was a kind of eureka moment we can say that uh, yes here is something what we can start with and we can apply uh, the team was excellent kanaya and gupteshwar joshi the the great assets to indic trans i would say definitely because they give us the confidence that what we can do what we want and how they can help us to achieve our needs because uh, that time we were on the growing stage even today we are so it it is a really a journey over last uh, i think so i joined the organization in around two, uh, two year two and a half years back but uh, the journey with indic trans has been started i think five years back and today i, I can definitely share with you all that uh, whatever challenges we face uh, erp next team or the kanyasas team indic trans team is uh, working very hard to help us whenever we have issues and as i rightly said ki initially we had two different licenses we were on tally so synchronization of two uh, different licenses and two different sets of accounts or uh, softwares was a struggling uh, time for us 
and with Inditrans uh, or ERP Next, we experience a good, uh, what I can say, a flow development for our kind of business or manufacturing uh, utilities. So uh, that is the main reason I would say that currently also uh, from moving from versions to versions, we experience that we really get a, a good uh, platform from version 14 or 12, what we used earlier, and now we are on 15. So which looks like a stable version. We have recently uh, moved to that. And we are really experiencing that some good developments over there. Uh, and and we, we are sure that definitely with our business needs, because as I said, we are growing. So definitely there will be more and more needs coming up. And especially the, the customization requirements are huge for our requirement. As Kamiya sir rightly said, doing so many customizations is again a challenge for keeping us uh, away from the standard uh, frappe uh, uh, utility but still we need that uh, customization because uh, sometimes we happen it happens that we are not able to uh, generate the reports or or uh, have the flow developed in the frappe a standard frappe software and that's the reason we come across uh, customizations and we do get a nice support from new indic trans team everybody is very agile and on toes that whenever we have some requirement or i think so they work even on sundays saturdays irrespective of the time uh, in three, uh, three o'clock in the night even i have seen that so thanks uh, kanayaji and entire your team and we are happy to have the erp next as our business partner and we look forward to have the additional support and whatever support we need because as he said perceptions because from the other side of the table, we have so many expectations. We feel that this is very easier for a software development to develop whatever we want. But sometimes there are limitations and we have to, as a business partner, if we say as we are a business partner, we need to understand each other's difficulties and see that whatever best possible we can take the route out, we go ahead with that. So I'm really thankful to the entire team here. and. We'll like to continue the journey in future years. Yes, yes. Thanks. Thanks a lot for uh, your kind words. But of course, as I said, the journey, it, it can't go with the one person. The both sides, the uh, upper table team has to work hand in hand. And that is how we, we have seen uh, the, the, the kind of comfortness and the kind of acceptance we got from uh, your team that made this uh, long journey very easy. Thank you. But we all are consumers again. We all are consumers. Let's hear out from uh, uh, the product owners who has manufactured this product, who has uh, built this product. So of course, they must be seeing a uh, various challenges, the various competition in a market. So for us, this question or rather this point is to you, uh, how Frappe is considering the differentiation between a competition like Oracle, SAP, Odoo, or many more uh, ERPs in different geographies. Every geography have their own local ERPs which are very well known, established uh, in the particular segment, market segment. So for us, what do you see as a uh, differentiation between competition like all these proprietary uh, ERPs? Yeah, firstly, thank you so much, Yogeshji and Viteshji, sharing uh, all this information, even Roshab Instrument. So like to add as Frappe, firstly, uh, you know, Yapinex is 100% truly open source uh, solution rather than, uh, you know, other competitors. So we are completely uh, community driven. As even partners are saying, we are completely community driven. It is not just uh, the vanilla product that you know you would be releasing, updating on and on, but it is the entire community that um, helps to build uh, this world class product that we have right now. So you might have, as I said, you know, uh, Kanaya said that there will be a lot of uh, localizations that would be required region to region. So we are we are able to do it via channel partners only, and there are community who helps to build us these uh, you know localizations faster because of the framework. Already Mitesh has introduced Frappe framework, which is the underlying uh, you know uh, technology that the application is built on. Yeah, next. So that is the main powerhouse. You know it helps not only with your uh, current business process, as you know you would have some business process, and you are very happy that okay this is. Uh, I'm able to map this, but it, it takes care of your future uh, scalability issues as well. When your business grows, you will need a lot of data, a lot of users adding in, a lot of transaction increase. You know, everybody wants to grow their business if they are implementing an ERP. 
so at least the framework capability will help to even uh, go ahead and you know not only help to integrate with other applications as i said you know in india we have india compliance application a partner made it possible so that we are compliant enough so that e invoicing are faster similarly in saudi the other batch systems and you know in tanzania the other systems are there so is the entire community that would you know keep us uh, you know different from any competitors and you have truly uh, all the freedom that you can use using this uh, you know the entire ecosystem it is not just one tool it is the entire bunch of tools that you guys would be using to make sure your business is up and running and it's highly scalable correct correct absolutely right so it is not just about the erp rather it is a bunch of tool or bunch of softwares which uh, which is available at uh, at a no cost or at a uh, no license fees to any users irrespective of whether you are a small organization or a enterprises so uh, we being a partners uh, so we have faced the challenges in terms of a competition whenever we try to uh, pitch in erp next how it is different from any other proprietary erp so of course the one, one of the important factor is all about the license cost or all about the open source where the complete ownership of a source code we gets there is the complete ownership of a data uh, we gets that comfortness uh, helps customers to move ahead and select uh, the product first and then they get into the evaluation of a features whether that features are really uh, doing a actual fitment for their expectations so such kind of competition while dealing with uh, mitesh what is your uh, thoughts or where do you see you faced a various uh, uh, hurdles in terms of pitching a erp next as a product uh, yes um uh... it it does indicate it does sound that uh, getting ahead and then talking against big big names in the market like sap microsoft dynamics and stuff is is going to be daunting especially when you bring in a product which is called erp next not so much known within the industry people who have come out of the previous jobs would have known about microsoft dynamics uh, sap in previous years ban and stuff like that but i feel that times are changing the new generation is taking over they don't have that previous experience what they want is that when they bring in with a, when they come into the market or they are running a company they want to ensure that the product suits their needs and then at what cost both ways erp next beats almost everybody and i would say that uh, as as aquatech when we have been communicating with customers and talking about erp next we we never faced difficulty because of a competitive product what is important and 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 all our partners we all do that way is to ensure we focus on the pain point of the particular customer ensure how it is met and 9 out of 10 times the competition doesn't manage to address that part and that's why erp next is able to continue and get into a business and then pro provide the business the opportunity to grow the way they want to grow and i think the focus is always on the end user the the customer who is wanting to use erp next and how they are going to be benefiting out of it and growing their business so i would say that competition is there there are many com like oracle has ascp for the advanced supply chain planning and yes it has so many features but does it work for your organization does it work in your region these are the questions that always remains unanswered with the, even with this big names and then you have an erp next solution coming up and sometimes even demonstrating at the fly that it is already there or on the fly indicating how it can be done just uh, makes the question go clear from the customer's mind that is erp next a product to go for or not so it all we always see that erp next flexibility and already existing functionality helps now when a pro company comes on board they always say and and there's a fear uncertainty and doubt spread that it's a open source it's insecure somebody can change everything so you have to explain to the customer that there is a pro, there is a aspect of very good code management there's an aspect of very good support from the oem so in case a partner is not available or the partner is not capable to provide a certain level of support there is a backing available as well and then there is always a whole big community of 
tens of thousands of users. So I think we have um, we have that uh, pretty much uh, covered, and and competition is there, but it's just the awareness uh, of ERPNX that like this seminars could help uh, people realize that such solutions do exist, and it's just not the dreamland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rightly said. So though these proprietary products, all these big names, they comes with hundreds and thousands of features. But are we really using it, or is it really required for our business? So we see hardly 30 to 40 percent of features we usually use in our day-to-day -day operations. Rather, we are paying for all 100 percent, which are actually is not in use. And that is what uh, happens in almost in every uh, proprietary products where those are quite big names and comes with the very uh, robust features. But yes, is it really required at this stage? Correct. And uh, so, and one is about the product, and of course, what what other things we are getting as a part of ERP next is a uh, the, the most uh, the, uh, the the important, which is bringing a more value on a table right now. We are seeing is the Frappe Cloud. So the deployment life, the, the deployment life cycle has become a very short. The overall hosting part, managing a infrastructure that has tremendously taken care by the Frappe team as a part of Frappe Cloud. So such kind of things are provoking customers or users to go for a product which is coming with a no cost or low cost based on your needs. So these are the very uh, uh, important factors, which is actually uh, compared to the other proprietary products available in the market, uh, enforcing or pushing to go for, let's give a try. At least giving a try is not a uh, bad thing. Now, moving ahead, uh, so from a customer point of view, so of course, this the, the overall industry, the manufacturing ecosystem is evolving. So uh, Sahil and Presh, what is your thought? What do you see? How do you envision open source ERP kind of ERP next solutions complementing or enhancing the, the overall manufacturing ecosystem? What is your thought uh, behind it? And do you really see, uh, is it really complementing the things in the overall manufacturing uh, world? Uh, you can go. Okay. So we think that, uh, as uh, it was mentioned uh, by Mitesh, that it's not the open source or uh, it is a, a, a custom solution or proprietary. It is how it can be expanded or uh, new features can be introduced. That, that has uh, become uh, somewhat important to us. Uh, yes. We see the systems where uh, they offer something that is 90% there of what we are looking for. And when they when we ask for to say, hey, can you modify this? And that, uh, so of course, we can do anything. And then the cost becomes either prohibitively expensive or uh, just lack of total understanding of the uh, salesperson who is trying to say, yes, we can do it. And uh, then only thing that they have to rely upon is their own experiences in the development that they have implemented for others versus ERP platform does allow the community to say, hey, we have this problem, we have that problem, and how it is addressed and things like those. So that has been uh, definitely very useful. In terms of manufacturing, we are very certain that more and more challenges and regulations are going to keep on coming. And uh, it is one of the features that we find that ERP Next is a little bit weak on is how to interface to the different challenges of uh, regulations and uh, how to manage them, how to document them, and how to provide uh, some examples as either part of the training, as part of the manual, etc. cetera. Um, a couple of things like for a medical manufacturer, certain things are very important to have uh, a different versions or the configurations that, uh, that that you can document and then relate it to if there was a rejection by a customer because a product had a problem, then how it relates to the customer, how it relates to the supplier, how it relates to the assembly process, how it relates to a certain version and things like those, they're not easily pulled together in the system. But as time goes on and these challenges become more, 
more prevalent or uh, more understood by the customers or the end users, we are very confident that they would uh, roll into some standardized features rather than uh, just having to implement it either ourselves based on all the tools those are available or uh, even have it a customization. And, and I think uh, in that sense, the open source or a well supported by the community and the partners uh, that this we feel that this has been the right choice for us. Uh, some of the other challenges that we can see is the uh, OEM manufacturer is uh, having multiple versions of the products for different customers. Uh, a, a good example or an analogy would be, let's say you are a car manufacturer and you have five different models which use the same engine, same transmission system, but you could have within the same brand name, uh, two or three different transmissions, uh, two or three different uh, engine sizes, et cetera, and certain things work with each other, but not with everything. Uh, and configuring those as a customized product and then to maintaining it as such, had been one of our biggest challenge, and we do have a lot of customization made in that regards. But again, these are some of the future challenges as we see that there is nothing like a standard product and everything is customized for somebody or, or people can choose what is their customization. Uh, and that is what we can offer very quickly. Uh, that's one of the manufacturing evolution that, that we see it. Uh, I think car industry has seen it uh, and we are seeing it somewhat. Yeah, and I would also say that one of the bigger challenges of our regulations is that there have been more demands in terms of uh, record retention, being able to pull information more quickly and doing that manually had been very challenging and introducing greater automation through use of the system uh, has been beneficial to be able to extract that information uh, come up with updated pricings up front because now customers are oftentimes demanding that products uh, be provided more quickly, uh, being able to provide more accurate forecasts about when the products uh, can be available to the customer with a more realistic timeline. Um, our products, we oftentimes have like a four to six month procurement cycle just to get all of the different parts ahead of time. We do plan for a lot of that ahead of time, but using an ERP system definitely helps in that. And when it comes to introducing the automation, one of the biggest challenges is that your automated solution has to be as good as what you had when you were with your manual processes and also needs to be comfortable for all of the people who are going to be using the system. And when we can customize the system so then afterwards it can better reflect how people are traditionally doing those, it's much easier to have more individuals in the company adopt the ERP system, minimize the effort that's uh, required by single individual to be maintaining a gigantic system, as opposed to multiple individuals are contributing into the system uh, inside of the company. Uh, and then afterwards, uh, once you get to just that point where you've gotten enough people to use the system, then you can look into how to introduce further automation and uh, further improvements to system. But if you try to do everything in just one organic lead, it, it becomes much more of a hurdle. Yeah, yeah, correct, uh, Sahil. So, uh, so whenever we as an implementation partner or the service provider, so whenever we try to pitch in product, this is how this product looks like, this is how this product is going to help you how it is fitting to your business processes but of course uh, they need uh, they would like to know uh, you anyway you are an implementation partner but is there anyone who is going to own the product who to whom i can hold a responsibility if something is not working as per expectations or how it is going to fulfill my business needs so that i can bang on this product for our next decade or so so while addressing in addressing such kind of concerns or hesitations from our manufacturing customers regarding the transition to some open source ERPs like a product like this, 
how do you uh, so this is for faraz what, what is your thought how do you collaborate with the partners to provide there is some kind of assurances and support throughout the implementation process will be given so that that comfortness gets to a customer and based on that it becomes a a, a, a pitch in quite easy because they they see a same kind of comfortness or same kind of uh, the capabilities they are getting from a oem not just from the partners because partners we being a partners we might pitch in something but is it really uh, adhering to the what oem offers or what oem is giving so what is your thought and what is your how you address those uh, or how you collaborate with the partners to ensure customer is getting a comfort zone um so uh, we do have uh, you know uh, both type of support that is available you know for the customer of course we take care of the application as well but now the thing the challenge is how do you implement and how correctly implement as per the in industry standards so we do regular audits if you you might have seen on linkedin that you know our team has a very specific partner enablement team there are uh, very experienced folks who knows uh, in and out the product and they are almost 10 years plus experience as a consultant so they work closely with all the partners so that uh, you know they are implementing in a right fashion in a you know industry standard practice and whatever it's there they will tell you that this is a standard either you should do it this way so that you know your uh, scalability is also taken care you just don't do and uh, you know implement for just your current uh, usage but for future perspective so that once you upgrade you know for the future releases it is seamless and you won't create a problem there so we have an audit process where we take care and there is a partner enable team as i said that takes care of the implementation challenges that a partner faces so partner can reach out to frappe whenever they are stuck or they need some expert solutioning and as a team we help them to make sure you know customer is not bottleneck i hope that answers the question for everyone yeah yeah so that audit part and third party audit kind of uh, aspect so there is a third party who is going to ensure the implementation is going should be a successful or if some service providers or partners are not giving a correct solutions or the answers or the good services then of course there are a ample of pool of partners available in the overall ecosystem which can be recommended as an alternate option so that customer should not suffer uh, than uh, sticking to a one partner and uh, and of course the pm part the audit part uh, plays a very crucial role in such kind of uh, engagement model so but what what kind of future outlook on the role of open source software in the manufacturing industry do you see for us uh, what kind of so this is going, so looking at the time constraint is the last uh, point i think we can have and then we can open for a uh, question and answers for the overall uh, team members team joining the call see what i understand uh, the on the comments and most of us are asking for the plan or the road map or the new features that you know we might uh, we might can add so that's the best way i can say you know on github maybe if you think that this feature is missing out in frappe or erp next you can just go there add your upwards and we'll make sure uh, you know the more upwards we'll take it into consideration and uh, do in a priority development but we keep uh, the current model here is we keep on uh, you know uh, make the product much more uh, stable rather than having lot of features we really want to have a best experience but we do consider these feature requests i understand we won't be having all the features that you know uh, the businesses would need and then in some way the framework can solve it you know you can have a lot of custom apps but the really standard features we take up and if you see in version 15 we have added lot of uh, enhancements and new features like the entire bomb a uh, creator which will give you a good vision to even create a bomb automatically rather than having a uh, you know other approach so there are things we even improved for manufacturing the way you will handle your uh, serial and batch numbers we gave a selector for that tool so we are there i mean we, we are listening we are our engineers are there on github so they will see which features are required and even redo refactor of certain things which can you know help uh, in a new newer version for a better performance so but yeah there is no promise as this feature we we might add in future but we are listening Yeah, yeah. this is quite hot topic of uh, roadmap, of course, in every conferences and meeting. But yeah. yes, at the same time, we understand the kind of uh, the effectiveness you are trying to be uh, without planning. But rather, there is a ample of team members, engineering team members who are working aggressively, continuously on the various aspects of a product. So, of course, that shows us there is some 
there is a continuous enhancements and improvements still going on and it is going to be continued that is how the journey is for all of any product yeah i would like to share uh, in the chat this if if you would like to anybody you know want to see what are the current releases and how many releases are there for yapinex just go through this detailed release log kind of you'll be able to find okay this feature has been added in this this version this is a good way to track uh, and also look out for get up for other you know upcode in case you feel that this feature is missing out great great and we are also planning this time we we are planning the the entire team is planning the way they want to add new features and you know there are other products as well yeah 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 recently we saw some uh, blog from rishab about the plans and the planning so i think uh, somewhere he is moving towards uh, making some plans or rather that that kind of freedom is going to give to the individual team members in the organization who can plan themselves and have some some stick where they are going to measure at the end and that is very much required so we understand that uh, so this overall webinar we have organized with the help of collaboration with the tccii and uh, of course uh, uh, with the help of uh, the frappe team and the partners and the customers uh, now this uh, forum is open for a questions from uh, the other members of the who has joined the call we are open for a uh, discussion Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, hello. Yeah, Hanan. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the very informative webinar, and uh, thank you. I think uh, we are uh, in the process of considering ERP next for our implementation, and uh, we've tried with other uh, proprietary local and uh, global uh, implementers as well. and one of the big things that we are looking at as a problem statement for you know in general thing I, i'm sure this is not like a very uh, prevalent thing because we are a project based company i think one other person mr yogesh also sort of agreed with me on that uh, we are a project based company where we have uh, requirements that are evolving continuously so we initially get like a basic overview and then as time goes with our communication with the customer the uh, needs of the bomb keep changing but the way usually it works is the bomb is fixed and most of it is usually for either you know when the product is fixed and it's like a batch manufacturing or a made to order situation uh, but in an engineer to order situation where the bomb is continuously evolving is there you know any way without much customization is it possible to uh, do it in erp next is my question thank you so uh, i believe women you can use the update i mean once the bomb is submitted and then we do have a very simple button that can update the cost or the items or the numbers for example you have 10 and you know the requirement is for 220 so you can always keep updating the standard bomb the default bomb that you might want to use i think that can help but we we need to get into very specific maybe we can connect offline so that yeah. the password i can be able to keep but the standard features are there to update oh, okay the Okay. Okay. So yeah, again, there for us again, project-wise, the bomb changes. But yeah, thank you for that info. I think uh, we will uh, get back to you privately. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Tarik, I think you have some question. Ah uh, yes. Uh, thank you for the wonderful uh, insights by by everyone. My basic uh, question was for Mr. Kalkar and. Uh, Uh, Russia uh, instruments being uh, um, the manufacturing side and the consulting side, as to how can they quantify the benefits that their customers are derived by using ERP Next? Any big challenges, you know, that for example, we um, uh, we implemented ERP Next for a hosiery division for a socks manufacturing company, and the uh, the production side uh, they benefited greatly from in house production and the subcontracting side because part of the 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 order was actually sent out to uh, uh, subcontractors for manufacturing so they they uh, had a 30% efficiency almost 30% efficiency in their in the work orders uh, on a turnaround basis so any uh, insight by rishab instruments or mr yogesh kelkar thank you Mm -hmm. 
anything. Okay. So from uh, our experience about uh, what you just described as uh, manufacturing and some items going as subcontracted items and such, what we have implemented, and I think a lot of features were either not available at the time we were looking at ERP Next, or they were, but we decided to customize it uh, from uh, our perspective. Uh, one of the things that, that has benefited us very much is to be able to manage the inventory for the subcontracted item, uh, manage what is subcontracted and how much is available or it is about to be available in terms of uh, the planning for availability so other things can be manufactured uh, together. And uh, in that regard, uh, I can't quantify the implementation uh, efficiency or anything like that, but I can say that there have been definitely very significant improvement in terms of shortening the, the production cycle. Uh, another uh, challenge is we face uh, for the project-based uh, management that somebody asked for is uh, very much like that, that when we have uh, different customers for a product, but with their own customization, uh, many times instead of making it to an order or making it to the stock, what we have broken down our products uh, as several sub-assemblies or the smaller chunks that we can manufacture for manufacturing efficiency. As an example, if we are using a sensor detection system into five different products, instead of making only five at a time, we would have 50 of them made. So when the next order for 50 is going to be prepared for manufacturing, that is one thing. However, being able to forecast how many of those that we would need, where they're being manufactured and how they're manufactured. Are there any subcontracted item? What is going to be the inventory for those subcontracted items, the component for having those subcontracted items manufactured? What are the total sub-assemblies available? And putting them into a working process uh, warehouse or, uh, or, or something like that, that helps in uh, cutting down the efficiency of uh, or inefficiency, inefficiency. in uh, pulling the number of parts oh there is an order for five of these let's just make only five or there is an order for seven of these but with this variation let's make only seven instead we go down to a level below and say this is going to be same for all five different versions and then take that and air something for one customer or the other customer and uh, one of the features that we have developed is to say if they are available today, how are we going to utilize them or have them in the queue? So another order comes in which requires a quicker delivery. We haven't consumed so that it is reserved and can't use by another product, but it's available so that this one can be turned around faster and the other one still has plenty of time. Uh, to, to make it uh, in a next batch. So there yeah. are lots of little things that we do see as uh, what we face as a challenge is, but we have been very fortunate to have them uh, addressed either through the standard features or through the customization. Yeah, and when we were implementing the system, one of the strategies that we tried to take is to separate the procurement of parts from the manufacturing of the parts. So there's not a complete chain from purchase order to the uh, complete delivery. It will be recorded by the transactions that take place with the batch, but you try to get all the parts based on what you know you need. And then afterwards, based on what has to be made, then afterwards, go ahead and allocate parts accordingly. And if you have things like sub-assemblies that are pre-built, one of the limitations, at least as of version 12 that we had seen was that you can't use sub-assemblies that were already produced. Uh, you could only um, basically plan for the raw materials in the production planning. And uh, that was one of the customizations that we had done to that plan to say, also consider the existing sub-assemblies, then go ahead and reserve the raw materials that you're going to be using. So that as long as it can more accurately reflect how we ought to actually procure the parts, then afterwards we were able to benefit much more from the system. 
I hope that answers the question that you had. Uh, I'd like to address the one that was asked before, and that was about the constantly changing bill of material. Um, I'm not sure at what level the current BOM uh, update tools and some of the things are there. In the beginning, we had faced a very interesting problem, and that was you update a BOM of one of the lower level subassemblies. It would not propagate all the way to the top yeah. level. Yes. And, so, uh, um, and uh, one of the things is uh, we as a medical device manufacturers, we face a challenge of maintaining and documenting the configuration of each product that, as and when we ship it. So as the BOM evolve on the project or in a new product development or anything like that, yes, we do maintain those. And I think Prepay system does allow for having more than one BOM active and one of those as being a default one. And the benefit of those is you can manufacture a product or you can uh, have an older version or a revision of a product available. You can continue to use the older revision parts until they are all exhausted. And yet you have a good handle on uh, the final BOM of what you think is going to be the standard production version for that product or the at different stages as your uh, project evolves, you can have a proper cost control as well as the knowledge of the cost. And those are uh, lots of interesting things, uh, combination of uh, standard uh, BOM support from Frappe as well as some of our customization. Yeah, and um, if you're using the standard ERP next, then you probably want to minimize how much variation you introduce at the lower levels of the sub-assemblies compared to the higher levels, because once you make a change to a lower level sub-assembly, every sub-assembly that follows after that is going to be unique to that product. So we had actually gone ahead with the customization where we establish at every level what are all of the different possible variations that could exist within the system, and then afterwards set it up so then afterwards that reference generalized bill of material can go ahead and uh, make sure that the appropriate updates are made to the standard bombs so that we would have a similar level of effort required. But obviously that's a much more specific uh, customization to our company. And if you're using something like just like a more standard uh, version of ERP Next, then afterwards you would want to make sure that you just hit all of the different variations at the top level. And then afterwards, that way you can consolidate your bills of materials and also your planning accordingly. Great. Uh, I think due to short of time, I think we, uh, we need to conclude this. Uh, we are really sorry for this, but yes, it was a really wonderful session and wonderful uh, thoughts everyone has shared. Tejas, would you like to uh, conclude this? Yes, sure. So, uh, and to everyone, actually, this was a more informative webinar uh, we have seen. And uh, uh, with this webinar, uh, many of our customers, as well as the uh, many of the audiences have who have joined this webinar have helped with this uh, information. So I think uh, th this webinar was more informative because of the customers as well as the partners uh, who have contributed in this webinar. So thank you, thank you all. Uh, this was possible due to the help of uh, DCCI uh, who have helped us in organizing this webinar, uh, the Deccan Chamber of Commerce from the Pune. Uh, they are the industrial association from Pune uh, with large amount of large member uh, count with them. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And uh, thank you for joining this webinar. Uh, we surely want to join you as a, uh, again, as a, uh, connect with you as a webinar partner for a panel member for this individually. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Yogesh Ji. Thank you, Faraz. Uh, thank you, Panaya sir. Thank you, Sahi and Pariya sir. And thank you, Mitesh. So uh, other than this, uh, if anyone have some questions, uh, please share with uh, those questions on uh, contact at directindictransit.com. I'm sharing the email address. Uh, please do share your feedback. Yes, sure. So thank you. Thank you all.
thank you everyone for joining this webinar yeah thank you thank you everyone. bye 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 bye